so happy we alive. Good evening, and welcome to Louisville Late Night. This is Patrick Moore, and we are thrilled this evening to have with us a guest of great renown, an artist, a composer, a director, a cultural merger, an artist extraordinaire, whom thanks to the University of Louisville Jazz Festival and thanks to Crane House, thanks to Helen and Calvin Lang of the University of Louisville Medical School, we are so pleased to have with us Mr. John Chang. Mr. Uh, Chang or may I say John? Yeah, John's that. John is uh, a composer who's come from uh, San Francisco and uh, gave a concert just yesterday evening at the University of Louisville. And uh, I don't know if there's very many people in the whole world who are as much on the cutting face of bringing the cultural heart of the music of the world together. John has traveled extensively. How many countries have you visited, do you think? <laughs> Let's see, I've uh, performed and toured in uh, South Africa, um, China. I'll be going to Japan this fall. Uh, Europe, uh, Canada. Uh, I haven't been to uh, South America or uh, uh, Mexico yet. Yet. <laughs> and uh, and you're going to uh, China and Japan uh, just this spring. So. Yes, I'll be uh, performing with the Beijing Trio that uh, features Max Roach on multiple percussion and Jabing Chen on Arhu, which is a Chinese two-string instrument. And as part of the Sister City Tour, which is supported by the uh, State Department and, uh, and uh, also other corporate sponsorship. And uh, in, in, in just a few minutes, we're going to uh, give a demonstration a, of uh, John's performance. Uh, but before we get into that, I'm, I'm just curious if... Uh, John would uh, share with us some of the uh, more interesting and uh, perhaps unexpected uh, events that have happened in your uh, travels as a musician and a, and a world connector, if you will. Uh, well, I've been blessed to to have these experiences that I, it's when I've had time to sort of reflect on it it seems just unbelievable um, over the past few years I've followed my own path um, I guess you might say to the sound of not not to the sound of a different drum but actually the sound of a different gong um, <laughs> but um, I've, I've worked with musicians from from China I've worked with a lot of African American and European American musicians from various kinds of w different walks of life, different beats of life, different religions. I've worked with Christians, uh, with Buddhists, and it's, I guess from, from, from pe people's perspective, they look at me, you know, John Jang, like, for example, the Chinese musicians, they look at me and they say, you look Chinese, but you don't act Chinese. <laughs> you know? And they, 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 they hear my music, it sounds Chinese. Tonight's program is sponsored in part by Meet the Composer New Residencies Program, which is a program in New York City that has given John a grant to do a composer in residence um, series. And 
I'm very excited to introduce John tonight because I've learned that he is someone of many, many talents. He's a composer, he's an artist, an artistic director, he's a collaborator, he's very many things. And of just sort of a few examples to introduce you about is John has received commissions from the Library of Congress, the Kronos Quartet. He's also composed the score to an adaptation of Maxine Hong Kingston's Woman Warrior. And as a pianist and artistic director, John's toured South Africa, the United States, Europe, um, all of North America. And in the fall, John will be going on tour in China and in Japan with the Bayesian Trio, which will feature Max Roach. So um, enjoy the program, John Jay. Do you, you need the mic? Okay, I usually have a pretty... <laughs> for you. For me, okay, because I, I have a loud voice, but I guess it's, uh, I guess in my, as I'm approaching the, the half century mark, I guess my voice is, is deteriorating, but um, anyway, um, when uh, Helen Lang asked me to give a presentation, uh, uh, she, she had so much excitement, there was like an explosion of ideas, because she's uh, been sort of a historian of some of my work and so she said well talk about your collaborations with Max Roach about your experience with South Africa with and it's like boy I don't know if I can do this in one hour so uh, what I thought I'd, I'd do is, is maybe talk a little bit about my experience with uh, a work that was recently premiered in Berkeley and in Minneapolis it's called when Sorrow Turns to Joy, Song Lines, a Spiritual Tributary of Paul Robeson and Maylon Fong. And um, this work pays tribute to two great artists, uh, one in the United States, Paul Robeson, who was a great actor, uh, singer, scholar, uh, political activist. Um, he was considered a Renaissance person, probably the most well-known uh, United States citizen uh, in the, at least the first half or first three quarters of the century, but uh, because of his political stance, of, of, for those you know, he's probably known for what he was accused of, of being. The other ar artist is Melan Fong, who was a great Beijing opera artist, um, who was also probably the most famous artist in China for the first uh, half of the century. Uh, he was a uh, a colleague of, of Paul Robeson, they met in London in 1935 and exchanged their views on, on singing. Both of them were early examples of multicultural artists. Paul Robeson discovered Africa when he was in London, and he spoke and sang in many, probably eight, I think eight different languages, uh, Chinese, Russian. Um, he also saw the universality of, of folk music as, as the purest form of human expression. Melan Fong, to improve his singing, uh, he studied Italian bel canto and African singing. He also visit, visited Egypt. And uh, Melan Fong was probably the first, uh, well, he was an innovator of the Don form, which was the female roles. So um, there's a lot to, to really, there's a lot of inspiring stories about Paul Robeson and Melan Fong, but rather than, um, I, I think what I'm going to stop here and, and begin with uh, the first experience I had listening to Chinese music. And it was when I was four years old, my mother used to sing along to a 78 recording of Paul Robeson singing Chinese folk songs of resistance. It was a, a recording called Chi Lai. And it was recorded in New York. Um,